Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 65 of C Sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about creating indexers. Please watch part 64 before proceeding with this video. In part 64, we discussed about how and where indexers are used within .NET Framework. Now, let's practically understand creating indexers with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an ASP.NET Web Application project. Let's add a class file to this project and let's call it company.cs. Now, a company contains employees. To encapsulate employee information, let's add a class employee. So public class employee. This class is going to contain, you know, three auto-implemented properties, employee ID, so public int employee ID, and it's going to have the default get and set accessors without any specific implementation. Now let me add name and gender properties as well. Name is of type string, so let's change the data type to string and the property name is going to be name and gender is also going to be string. Alright, so we have an employee class with three auto-implemented properties. Now within the company class, usually a company contains a list of employees. To, so to hold those list of employees, I'm going to create a private variable here of type list employee. And let's call this list employees. And then within the constructor of this company class, I'm going to initialize this list. Okay, so usually a constructor will have the same name as that of the class and doesn't have a return type. So here, this is the company class constructor. Look at the name, it's the same name as that of the class and it doesn't have a return type. So I'm going to initialize this list here. So list employees is equal to new list of employee. And then I'm going to add some employees to this list here. So as soon as I create a company object, then I will have all the list of employees that belong to that company within this object here. Okay, now in reality, we may actually load the list of employees from a database table, but to keep things simple here to understand indexers and focus on indexers, I'm going to add some employees within code. Okay, so list employees dot add, I'm going to add a new employee. And obviously we need to specify the properties. So employee ID, let's say that's one. Name of the employee is going to be, let's say Mike and his gender is male. All right, so at this point, we have an employee added to our list, but let's add a few more employees. And to speed things up, I have that already typed, so let me copy and paste that here. And if you look at this code, it's very simple. It's the same code. We are adding, you know, different employees here with different IDs and names and genders. Okay, so at this point, we have this company class within that we have this private variable of type list employee and within the constructor we are initializing that object and adding employees to that list okay so this is a private list meaning nobody can access this list outside of this class okay but then remember in the previous session we discussed about using a SQL data reader object and a session object using the indexers. In a similar fashion, I want to be able to use this company class and, and retrieve the employees using employee ID. And at the same time, using employee ID indexer, I should be able to change the names of the employees. Okay, is that possible to implement an indexer like that for our class company? Absolutely, let's see how to do that. Okay, now we create indexers using this keyword. So public, so the return type of this indexer is going to be string because I give it an employee ID to this company class. I give an employee ID and it has to return me the name of the employee, you know, whom, whose ID matches with that employee ID. So it's going to return the name, which is string. And then we create an indexer in C sharp using this keyword. And then I open the square bracket. And then what is the data type of employee ID? It's an integer. So I'm going to pass an employee ID and the class should return me the name of the employee uh, whose ID matches with the past in employee ID. So int employee ID. Okay, 
So just like properties, you know, if you if you are familiar with properties, implementing indexers is very straightforward. Just like properties, uh, it's going to have get and set accessors. We discussed about properties in the previous session of this video series, so please watch that video. So it's going to have a get accessor. So what should this get accessor do? You know, for the given employee ID, it should return me the name of the employee. Okay, so to do that, where are the list of employees present? The list of employees present in this list. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use a little bit of link here, you know, to return the employee uh, name whose ID matches with what is being passed into this indexer. So I'm going to say return, you know, we have the list, list is list employees. So from this list, okay, I want to get a first or default element. So within this list, find an employee EMP such that that employee dot employee ID should match with whatever we are passing into this indexer. Okay, so this method is going to return an employee object. Okay, look at that first or default method. You know, look at the return type from the IntelliSense. It's returning an employee object, and from that object, I want to pick up their name. And return that. So that's the get accessor of this indexer. Now, what should the set accessor do? Now, if I set an employee ID, you know, for example, I will say company of employee, company of one, you know, something like this. The usage of this indexer should be something like this. If I say, let's say I have a company object, and when I say company of three is equal to, you know, maybe uh, Jade, that's the name. Then what should happen for an employee with ID is equal to three? We should change the name to Jade. Okay, so that's what the set accessor should do for the given employee ID. Change their name to whatever value they are going to set. So to do that, what am I going to do? From the list first, we should find that employee. So list employees first or default. You know the same kind of the e expression. So for the given employee, find the employee ID. If that matches with what is passed in, then set their name to whatever value they are pass setting. So here we are setting Jade. So Jade will be assigned to the name property of the employee. So it's basically employee ID. So let's copy it here. So Jade will be set as the name for the given employee ID, you know, for whatever employee ID you pass in, if there is an employee with that ID, you know, we get the employee and their name is set to that value, Jade in this case. Okay, so we have the indexer implemented here. So the points to note here is we we implement the indexer using this keyword. Indexers will have a return type and it it has parameters, and then it has get and set accessors just like properties. Okay, so we are done implementing indexer for our company class. So let's build the solution. Let's see how to actually use this indexer on a web form. So let's go back to the code behind file of this web form one, and let's print the names of some of the employees. So here we have list of around eight employees. So let's say I want to print out the name of employee two, five, and eight. Okay, using indexers, and to do that, so response dot write. Let's say Name of employee with ID is equal to two. Let's say. Now I'm going to use you know first we need to create an instance of company class just like how you know we are we are using the session object and SQL data reader object. So first let me create an instance of the company class company is equal to new company and remember what happens when we create a constructor of this you know when we when we create an instance of this company class you know the constructor gets invoked and within the constructor we are creating a new list and populating the list with some employees here okay so that's what happens when i create this company object now i want to retrieve the name of the employee whose id is 2 and look at this the moment i open the square bracket it it detects that there is an indexer on employee ID and then the moment I pass to it it look at the return type it's string meaning it's going to return the name of the employee that's it 
and then let's put an HTML break so that the next employee will come in a different line. All right, so let's copy this and you know let's say name of the employee with ID is equal to five, name of employee with ID is equal to eight. Now let's get the employee name with ID five and eight. And then what I also want to do here, we are only retrieving you know the names of the employees okay by passing in the ID so obviously when we pass in the ID and if we want to the name then this get accessor of this indexer will be invoked and now let's say I want to change the names of those employees is it possible with the indexer absolutely so let's say response dot write um, let's say here changing names of employees with ID is equal to two comma five and eight and let's write an HTML break there and how do we change the employee names using indexers all you need to do is so use the company object here so company object now let's say if I want to change the name of the employee with ID is equal to two company of two is equal to let's say um, second employee name changed similarly let's do it for 5 and 8 as well so 5 and 8 so after the name is changed let's print their names once again so it's the same piece of code so we can just copy and paste it there all right so these three lines should print the name of the employees before change. So if you look at employees 2, 5, and 8, within the company class, 2 is Pam, 5 is Emily, 8 is Pan. So that's what should be the names of the employees, you know, before we have changed them. And we are retrieving them using the indexer. So Pam, Emily, and Ben. And we are changing and we are saying changing names of employees with ID is equal to 2, 5, and 8. So second employee name changed. Oh, it should actually be fifth employee name change. I think it's because of copy paste error there. So let's actually call this uh, fifth employee name changed, eighth employee name changed. And let's also have an additional HTML break there so that the output will be properly formatted. So here, look at that. The employee names with uh, 2, 5, and 8 is Pam, Emily, Ben. Changing names of employees with ID is equal to 2, 5, and 8. And look at that. You know, after we have changed the names, second employee name changed, fifth employee name changed, and that should be eighth employee name changed. I think we didn't do it for the last employee, so that should be eighth employee. Anyway, so here we are using the set accessor. I mean set accessor of the indexer to actually change the values there okay so if you understand properties implementing indexers is pretty straightforward so the points to remember we use this keyword to create an indexer just like properties indexers have get and set accessors indexers can also be overloaded we will discuss about overloading indexers in our next video session and uh, this is how we have used the get and set accessors of our company object, you know, of that indexer, employee ID integral indexer. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.